Hi, my name's John. Welcome to another Sunday night nightcap. This week's nightcap is all lathe work and mill work. I actually haven't been in the workshop at all this last week. I've been basically stuck in the house waiting for me. My leg to recover from its operation last week, which it has done very well. It's healed up lovely and I'll be able to go back to work tomorrow. What I did do before I had the operation, I shot a lot of video in the shop. Basically it was all about making the AR40 collar holder. So that's what you're going to get this week. Quite a lot of lathe work, taper turning, uh, some milling work, a little bit of weld leaving. It has a strange ending anyway. Good evening and welcome to Sunday Night Draw. Tonight it is a DTI gauge. And in our bucket we have all our raffle tickets, raffle names. And tonight's winner is... Oops. Andy Reynolds. Whoops. There you go. Thanks very much and I hope to see you again. All take care now. Bye. Thanks a lot Deb. I'll get this DDI gauge in the post this next week. That's going to be this week's giveaway. It's a nice lump, it's stainless steel, with two beautiful centres in, very highly polished to a good, a good finish, absolutely dead straight. I actually use this one um, setting up a job in the lathe, you'll see later on the video. I've got four or five given, a couple of my friends have got them in the air, use them all the time. So that's going to be this week's giveaway. You see it's got centres in both ends, it's absolutely dead straight, I've checked it, I can't detect any run out at all. That's got lots of uses for setting up jobs in the lathe. If you want a chance of winning that, all you've got to do is email me your name, your full name, not just a Brian or a Billy, a double name. Uh, your name will go into the bucket and it'll be drawn out next week and if your name comes out, you'll win it. I'll post it off anywhere in the world. If your name's already in the bucket, it remains there until you win something. So that's this week's Prize. I went to a car boot sale today with Mick, uh, bought one of two items. One of them is a nice little model IC engine. I'll get a close up of these. Uh, it's the first car boot sale, like I say, we've been to this year, and it was quite pleasant. I was surprised there was some, some decent stuff there for a change. This is the model engine I bought at the car boot sale. I basically bought it for my dad because he actually collects them. Got a number on the back. It's also got a make on the front, if you can see it there. It's in decent condition. It's a, what they call a glow plug engine, there's a glow plug goes in there. It's got, it's got good compression. I may so I can get a little bit of fuel and make a mountain for it and run it, just to, just to fire it up. be interesting to see what it runs like. So that's one item I bought. And I bought this, it's an Imperial drill index, I've actually needed an, uh, an aluminium one, I've got a nice wooden one, but I'm going to use this one and I'll probably give the wooden one away in a giveaway later on. Then there was this, it's a little slip stone, nice fine one, and that's seen a lot of work, it'll probably see a lot more as well. Last but not least, there's this tin, tobacco tin, tobacco tin with hinges on it, must be very old. And then here's some nice pieces of silver, some nice pieces of tool steel. There's a part knock blade there made from a hacksaw. Keyway cutter, I haven't got very many of them. Small centre drill. Some blank bits of tool steel. All useful stuff, it'll all come in handy. This sort of boring tool there somebody's made. Two tiny centre drills. They'll go away in the the box that's never used. 
all in all not a bad collection and for all that stuff there I paid £10 so it was well worth well worth having a look down there that's the index I've just bought with all my Imperial drills in I've actually got the same one just got to set a number of drills in I need another one for my metrics but I have got this wooden one which I used to use and I'll probably give that away, possibly next week. Quite nicely made. Rock Island, Canada. Union Twist Drill Company. That's a nice drill stand. But now I've got two. Two of the same. I'll have to try and find a merit one. Then I'll have the full set. These drills are going to use in the lathe or the drilling machine. They're not used for joinery work or drilling holes and bits of plate I'm at the stage now where I need to put this keyway in the keyway is actually parallel to 3th keyway it goes straight up and down which means it's narrower at that end than it is at that end the attempt at putting the keyway in the lathe was a total waste of time so I'm going to have another go at doing it on the milling machine. What I intend to do is just drill a three at hole straight down there and then either file it or make a tool to scrape or cut it out. Obviously if I try and drill a hole in there the drill is going to push off. But what I can do I can put that in. Just machine a flat on there with a milling cutter until I get the right amount of overlap on there. I'll measure how much I need and then I can put a drill in, put a drill straight down, take that out and I'm going to have a parallel hole or a parallel slot which at least will be a start for to put the keyway in. This one go in the vise so I'll just weld a couple of lugs on the either side of there and I can clamp that down. I'll put a centre on there to find the centre and I'm going to machine the slot where the mark is because that's where I had a bit with it in the lathe. You can see in the bottom there where I had a bit a bit scratch in it. So that's the idea. We'll weld two lugs on it here first, get it all mounted up, put that in, machine a bit of that away and then drill right down through them both. It won't do any harm, I'll still be able to use it. And once that's tapped into there it's a real good fit. I've tack welded a couple of nuts on there. Interesting to see how much that nut's actually pulled up with a weld. Contractors and cools, it'll not matter because the weight's going to be going down that way. I'm just going to use that centre to line this up. That. So if I now lock off the Y axis, I can clamp on those two and that is going to be bang on in the centre. This will make sure our centre is held into the nice and tight, that's got the held in place. Use it will not take a lot to hold it. It's amazing how strong a quarter inch of TIG weld can be. Right, so that's nicely held down. Y axis is locked off. I'm going to turn this around so I'm machining at this side, it's just easier for me to fill in, that's all. Okay, so 
So that's a three years cutter, which we know is dead on centre. Right, so the idea is to mill this away down until we're touching that face there. Eh? Only gripping on the tape off. Right, I'm doing what I should have done in the first place, just put a clamp on just to make sure that I can't move in there. Let's put a mark on there which is probably quarter of the width of the drill. We need to go a little bit further. a little bit more and I'll lock the table off right so now we need to put a, a flat bottom drill and cutter on there just to take that little pip off And hopefully I can go in with a 3-inch drill. By a flat bottom, I mean a two fluted cutter. Take that one. So now if I put a, a three of fuel in there, it should follow that hole straight down. It's a nice sharp three of drill, a good quality one. Really nice and true. One thing I didn't do was measure how deep I need to go but I can't measure right so that's the level of the edge of it there I'll set the DRO at zero measure how deep I've got to go right we need to go in for a depth of 53 mil
go already into 10, so it's going to have a good start to keep the keep the drill straight. The fuel tank is cutting nicely. I'll keep backing out and getting some more cutting fuel into there. These AR32s get a real good hold. I quite often use them for gripping drills instead of using the drill chuck. They also run a lot more accurate. Okay, so it's basically done what I wanted it to do. Going straight down. And that's a lot wider at the bottom than it is at the top, or a lot deeper. I think if I get a rotary burr in there, I'll be able to clean that up. Very carefully just square the edges up and that's gonna, that's gonna do the job for us. That was the, the shaping tool I've made to do the job. I worked on aluminium, just won't work on this, at least not with a not without it. The ideal tool would be a slotting head on a milling machine or a shaping machine. But I think that's gonna be, be alright. I've got some nice small carbide burrs. I'll just carefully dress the end of that away and then finish it off with a with a fail. But you wouldn't like me as a dentist. I wouldn't like me as me dentist. Bastard! Oh, you bastard, you clumsy twat! Oh, you clumsy bastard, man, John! <laughs> <laughs> 